And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Today we're doing Fire Emblem Three Houses, or Fire Emblem Persona, or Fire Emblem Harry Potter. I don't know. It's one of those things. Maybe all of those things. I know you're going to hear a lot of people describe it as one of those things, and it's for good reason. There is a large amount of school-oriented life sim in this game, and the way that plays out is you start off as a mercenary, and through a couple of interesting events, you become a professor at a monastery church school. Now that sounds ridiculous. And in some ways it kind of is, but it's not as if they do it in a way where it seems outwardly ridiculous. So yeah, it's fine. Now, I can't stress how shocked I was just how much time you spend in this school slash monastery. But let me set up exactly kind of what goes on. When you become a professor, you basically are there to help students learn how to fight, how to be formidable combatants. And I won't spoil why. I played it for a while, and it is story-related. I'm not going to touch that. But the more you learn about the people in this game, the more you care about what they care about. And because it's a life sim, and it handles things in this way where you're both kind of a teacher and a student, like, it doesn't officially recognize this, but you're basically learning all these skills as you're teaching these skills to these kids. You basically should design your lectures around what the students want to hear and what they can use and etc. Or you can use auto lecture just in case that's not something that you're interested in. In truth, there is a lot of opportunities to automate the minutia of the game, and I found myself sometimes automating and sometimes not. The more the story advances, the less interesting these sort of everyday things seem, and I found myself automating it more. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The fact that they give you the option kind of lets you play the game as you want to play the game. The further along you get, the more interested you're going to get in certain aspects of the game, and you have some flexibility in exactly what it is that you're dealing with. You essentially do the life sim stuff going around this school, completing missions around the grounds for a month of the game, and then at the end of the month there is a mission. And yes, it is very much structured like Persona. I see a ton of similarity between the way this game sets itself up and Persona in basically everything but setting. Obviously, this game takes place in a monastery in a medieval-ish setting that also functions as a school, where Persona is much more modern, obviously. There's basically three factions of students, houses. You have to pick one at the beginning of the game. It deviates from the sort of Harry Potter comparison here in that you get to choose, but in pretty much any Harry Potter game you get to choose as well. The quote-unquote sorting hat doesn't exactly contradict what you want. There's no sorting hat here, though. It's just a school filled with students that are learning to fight bandits and stuff. I mean, that's not all they're doing. You can garden, you can fish. And I think you'll find that in the early portions of the game, that stuff makes a lot of sense to do. It does actually help build bonds, etc. But obviously, this is a Fire Emblem game, and the students are learning to fight. Now, why are students learning to fight? That is really the question of the day, and very much what the story begins to concern. Like I said, I'll do what I can not to spoil things, but you are part of a very powerful church that clearly has control over a lot of the world. They're fairly constantly telling you that you need to learn the teachings and observe the whatever. I don't know, it's, it's very typical authoritarian church sounding stuff. And I think that gives you a clue as to what goes on in a lot of the story. But the thing that really works is not so much the structure of the story, but the structure of the game. You end up spending tons and tons of time with the students, learning about them, trying to sort of work to keep their moods good and help them learn. And it really helps if you kind of genuinely care about them and try to do things that benefit them. And therefore, it kind of fosters that within you. That's good. That's stuff that it's hard to do in a story, and they sort of figured out a way that's pretty easy to do that. I particularly like how just simple actions can have effects on the battlefield. For instance, you can take specific students who may have a motivation problem, or for that matter, have extremely good motivation and increase it by having lunch with them, or, you know, just simple things like that. And that translates. They end up performing better on the battlefield. They end up having more critical hits and 
Honestly, it works out really well, but that brings us specifically to the battlefield. Now, if you're familiar with Fire Emblem at all, you're not going to be shocked at the battle system. They didn't do anything that I think is really overtly different. And I want to go ahead and say, that's good. I would prefer them not to. It's a good battle system. However, it is hard. It is a difficult battle system. And there's a reason why they give you the opportunity to play this game in normal or hard. And then, then you get a second difficulty screen where you can select casual or classic. In classic, if characters die in a battle, they stay dead. In casual, they don't. Now, given this is a hard game and actually does require a fair amount of strategy, although it will do things that indicate what strategy will work well, like a character will say, maybe we should come at them from two sides, although you're welcome to ignore them. I did a couple of times. It's not as if the game gives you no guidance. It gives you something. To describe the battle system in its most simple form, everybody's on a grid, you have to move them around, you get a turn to move them, you need to progress them across the map, and have them attack the enemies. There's a wide range of attacks that you can change weapons mid-battle, you can select different moves, you can hire a battalion to follow one of your characters around, those battalions can be utilized for more powerful attacks. And these battles are pretty big, they're sprawling, and they can take literally an hour. And if you die, that's an hour gone. And that happened to me actually a couple of times. After about 35 minutes in a battle, I lost. And it's devastating, let me tell you. Because you're like, I just did all this stuff and now I have to do it again. It's why you definitely should engage in the other elements if you're trying to speed through the rest of the game, or even just if you're trying to speed through the battle itself, like you want to get back to the life sim. Really, you have to engage the entirety of the game. It's a very balanced game, and there's a lot of ability to prep for the battle, there's a lot of ability to nurture the skills of the students, and you should be doing that. That's the point of the game. It's not a game for people who are not patient. It's a game where investing a little bit of time and thought is definitely a big help. And because of that, I think that this game really does a good job maintaining some sense of momentum. I never really felt like, oh, this is unnecessary and I shouldn't be doing this. Because if it wasn't something I was interested in at the moment, say lecturing, I could automate it. I didn't have to go fishing, except for, for a few minor missions. I didn't have to grow herbs. I could. I didn't have to. And although I have not beaten this game yet, I'm a little ways in, probably between 12 and 15 hours. Although I'll say I ended up playing more than I needed to. So while I'm a little bit further than what I'm showing here, I am not as far as I probably could be. I've seen a very wide range of times this game takes to complete, from 40 to 80 hours, and it's easy for me to see how it could be either. If you spend every minute doing everything this game offers you to do, you're going to take a very long time to play this game. It's also not an easy game, but I find that everything in it is actually worth it. I enjoyed pretty much everything I engaged in, and when I had done it a few times and was kind of, you know, done with it, I could be. The story starts to pick up, and stuff starts to go down, and you don't have to keep doing the extensive lesson planning or gardening or stuff. It's really good because the student interaction you tend to actually continue with, you get it pretty much one way or the other. It's kind of the more micromanagement stuff that you can automate or skip. And that's great. It's awesome, actually. It really, really works. It's a well-balanced game, like I said, that manages to keep a momentum. My criticisms for the game, at least in the time that I've played it, are that somebody who wants nonstop action cannot fully enjoy this game. It is not a non-stop action game. I spent probably a third of my time doing battles, and although that might sound like a very small amount of time for a strategy game that is built entirely around battles, when you realize that this isn't just that, it's a lot more, I mean, you're either going to really be happy or really be disappointed. It's not purely just an endless series of tactical battles strung together by a linear narrative. It's a life sim at a school. I mean, it's not really a school. It's technically a monastery, but it never really comes off as a monastery personally. And the church itself can get kind of weird at times. 
I'm gonna say I recommend this game. If you're a fan of strategy games and life sims, it's basically right up your alley. If you're ambivalent to one of those types of games and interested in the kind of story I've described here, probably still gonna work for you. If you outright dislike one of those genres, it might be a little bit of a dicey proposition, but I think there's even a chance you'll still like it if you don't like life sims but do like strategy games because the life sim can kind of work for you rather than be a thing that you have to immerse yourself in. But yeah, overall, this is a great game, and I really like it. I'll definitely be playing all the way through it. I'm glued. I'm hooked. What about folks out there who have already bought the game? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you're thinking, and, you know, contribute your thoughts to anybody who might be considering purchasing this game. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and do not forget to click the notification bell. As always, so thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.